So if you open your apps pane in Microsoft 365, you might wonder what the heck are all these things? As Microsoft 365 is just like Word, an Excel, an email, right? Well, yes, it is all of that, but no, it's a lot more. And if you know your way around Microsoft 365, there are tools that can help you with practically any job or business, either letting you save some dollars by cutting out a third party subscription you might have otherwise, or just straight up giving you access to a tool that you never had before. And while Microsoft does release some things in preview and occasionally products change significantly or they go away, this is a suite of products that you've been able to rely on fairly consistently in the long term. And for businesses, that's important, as while it's great to find a tool that can help you out, finding it's disappearing and coming up short on finding a replacement you can afford feels worse than just not having the tool in the first place. So assuming you have some kind of tier of Microsoft 365 business or enterprise licensing, these are my top five picks of features that for many users are a little hidden from view, but might add incredible value for you. If you ask your customers for feedback, or you have internal processes where your colleagues fill out paper forms, or you're just wondering how to collect information you need to arrange your next office offsite, then you might really benefit from using Microsoft Forms. Forms allows you to really easily create straightforward to use forms and collect data using them from anyone by giving them a web link. You can theme your form, arrange it as you want, and even set up fairly sophisticated processing by altering the form flow based on user responses. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, my videos might be a little bit hidden from you too. So remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you'll know as soon as my next video comes out. And one of the most impressive things about Forms is if you're using Teams or you're using Microsoft 365 Groups, you can attach your Forms to this group context so that everyone in that group can see all of the responses that come in. So imagine you have a finance team and you have all of these forms that people need to fill out for them. You could create all of those forms in that finance team group context, and then they could share the information and workflow that needs to come out of capturing that information. So creating a form is as simple as coming into your forms app and just clicking on new form. And once you're in here, you can create a range of different types of questions. So you've got choices, text, ratings, dates, rankings. You can upload a file if you're using this for internal audiences, things like net promoter score. So there's lots of options here. Once you've got multiple questions on your form, you can move them around as you'd want to. And you can also style your form in any way that you might like. So you can change the color, um, you can change the overall design, and you can customize this as you would want to. And when you're ready to collect responses, you can just click on collect responses here. You can select who is able to respond, and then you can get a link that you can send out to anyone. And assuming you've got some responses, you can click on this responses tab, and it will show you all the responses you've got. Creating a form is just as simple as that. So you can get up and running using forms in a couple of minutes. And if you're currently subscribing to something else like SurveyMonkey, then in many cases, that subscription can just go away and you can move across to using forms, which is part of your Microsoft 365 subscription. The next app I want to highlight is Microsoft Lists. And in some ways, Lists is becoming like an everything product for Microsoft 365, as it's basically a wrapper on top of your normal SharePoint lists, but it's set up to make it really easy to interface with. And it's even the backend data tool set that Microsoft uses for some of their products like Teams webinars. So if you have some form of structured data that you want to store or capture or share with others, then list should be your starting point. So list is really easy to get started with. Once you get into the lists app, you can create a list just by clicking on new lists, or you can see your lists down here if you have some already. So we're just gonna click on new list, and you can either start from blank or from an existing list as a template. You can import an Excel document as a list or a CSV file, so it's very flexible. But what we're gonna look at here is some of these templates. You see there's a range of templates down here and a new feature in the last few weeks is that some of these templates now have approvals attached to them. So let's just try a content scheduler with approvals. And you can see what this is going to look like. I'm going to use this template 
And then when you create a list, you can pick a color for it, you can select an icon, and you can select where it's going to reside. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick one of my teams that I'm a member of to put this in. So I'm gonna click Create. And you can see it gives you some options about features that it can set up. So I'm just gonna click Next and Close. So let's go ahead and add an item. And then the way that the approvals work, as you can see, this says not submitted right now, but this is a clickable button. So I'm gonna click on not submitted. It's gonna take me to this request approval screen. I have to select who will approve it. So in this case, I'm gonna select Pradi. And I'm just gonna go ahead and submit it. And here I am in Pradeep's approvals app in Teams. And you can see that this demo item from lists has just come across to Pradeep. We can click on this. If we want to, we can approve it or reject it. And then jumping back to lists, you can see this has been approved. So this is a really powerful tool to get you started with storing data and even integrating with some of Microsoft 365's automation features, really out of the box from a template without doing any extra work. So if you need to have processes like this in your business, I would recommend that you take a look at lists. For anyone who spends any time bouncing time options back and forth for meetings with clients or your internal stakeholders, Bookings is a powerful solution that can save you a heck of a lot of effort. You can set up personal or team calendars for different types of appointments you offer and then allow your customers to make their own bookings at a time convenient to them using an easy web interface. A few months ago, I put out this tutorial to get started with bookings, and this has now been viewed by several thousand people. But there are also more niche use cases I've covered, like this one, using bookings to streamline scheduling interviews, or this one, adding an on-site registration feature to your bookings backend. Links to each of these videos are below and hopefully demonstrate the breadth of value this product can provide. Additionally, new to the Bookings ecosystem is Virtual Appointments, which is a Teams app that lets you set up meetings into a Bookings calendar. This is becoming a really powerful component of Microsoft 365, which when teamed up with Teams Premium, adds additional features to provide an even better virtual meeting experience to customers. It's definitely worth checking out. So here we are in the Teams Virtual Appointments app, and you can see this gives you a new interface to access what you're seeing in your bookings calendar. So I can create a booking from here. I can put in a customer, information, I can fill out any custom questions that I have, and I can provide a link to join in Teams. Um, so this is a really useful way to allow not just a self-service view of bookings, like this booking landing page that I use, but also allows you to service your bookings in a far more interactive way when setting them up. While Power Platform does have its own independent paid license options, every single Microsoft 365 license includes a large subset of Power Platform's features that allows you to use no-code or low-code options to develop solutions across Power Apps, Power Automate, and even Power BI. In general, if what you're trying to interact with is inside the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, then you can do everything you need to without ever having to pay an extra dollar for Power Platform. And you can see here the incredibly rich range of standard connectors that are available in Power Platform, which are available for you to use within that Microsoft 365 license that you've already got. Now, when you're done here, you can check out this video as an example, a basic contact tracker solution you can build with lists and Power Automate in about 30 minutes. The link's below. In many ways, the sky's the limit when it comes to this kind of Microsoft 365 feature, as if you can really think about what you want to build in Microsoft 365, there's a good chance that you can build something like that using Power Platform. And then you also have the inclusion of Dataverse for Teams, and that gives you even more possibilities. Now, Dataverse is the purpose-built data storage platform that's at the heart of Power Platform's paid subscriptions and Microsoft's Dynamics 365 customer engagement apps. It makes storing and interacting with data in Power Platform incredibly easy. And with Dataverse for Teams, if you choose to build your Power Platform solution inside Teams, you get a lot of the power of Dataverse all included in your normal Microsoft 365 subscription. 
Now there are limitations, but in many cases, these are not limitations that you're going to hit before the value of adding a paid Power Platform subscription that includes full Dataverse far outweighs the cost of doing so. I really think that Power Platform is for many users one of the most hidden features in Microsoft 365. And for many of you out there, if you're familiar with, for example, creating formulae in Excel, there's no reason why you couldn't get started with something like Power Automate really quickly to start doing things that you could only dream of without a tool like that. And if you've got Microsoft 365, getting started costs you nothing extra. We all have to-do lists and the bigger our teams or the more complex our projects, the more time consuming managing all of those tasks can become. And historically, managing tasks or to-dos across the Microsoft ecosystem has been a little bit of a frustrating process, as while there's been lots of options in place, OneNote is a good example. Tying all of those tasks together in one clear workflow that works across all the apps has been really elusive. With Planner and To Do, you have two apps that make this experience a lot clearer. It's not yet perfect, but if a few years ago you gave up due to frustration, you should really look at this again, um, as this may give you options that you don't have if you're using a third-party solution outside of Microsoft 365. So Planner is a really easy tool to start working with. And you can see here, when you create a new plan, you have some templates here to help you get started. So let's just start with a simple plan. I can add my plan to a group. And if you have sensitivity labels set up, you can use those here as well. And you can see I already have some items here. You can move these items around from category to category. You have different buckets that you can work in. So it's a really easy to use Kanban board. And you can assign tasks here as well. So if I want to assign a task, say to myself, I can go ahead and do that. You can see this customized buckets is now assigned to me. Now jumping over to the to-do app, your to-do app is your personal to-do list, but you can see that immediately my customized buckets from Planner has come over to my to-do app here. So you have a really neat way between to-do and Planner of planning out what your team needs to do and then making sure that each team member has a list that can be across different plans, across different projects, or just the personal things that they're working on so that everyone can have their to-do list work in the way that they want it to. So you may have seen that a couple of weeks ago, Microsoft released the preview of the Loop app. And I think that's a very exciting thing to be aware of, as while well today we're looking at features that may be a little bit hidden in Microsoft 365, I think the direction that Microsoft tools are going in is to really be agnostic as to what app you're choosing to work in and to bring the tools and data that you have across different apps to where you're choosing to work that day or, or where that project is based. And with Loop, you can start to see this, that you can see send out tables, you can send out pieces of text, you can send out to-do items, and they all exist within your Loop infrastructure. So in the future, as Loop develops, hopefully we'll see less of features being hidden and more than coming to the surface through all of the apps you're using. I think that's a really exciting possibility uh, and there's so much value in Microsoft 365 that everything Microsoft can do to highlight the capabilities of these tools and to give people benefit through using them, um, the better for all of our businesses and all of our work lives, I think. So hopefully this has been useful to you. I hope that you've at least seen a couple of things here that you weren't aware of previously. Drop something down in the comments if you think there's an item that I'm missing that you think is the most important hidden aspect of Microsoft 365, or what did you learn here that's helped you in your business? I would really love to find out. Um, so hopefully you've gained some value from this. If you have, then I hope to see you back here next time. And until then, bye-bye.